In a crowded field, Pol Pot ranks as one of the most vicious and inhuman megalomaniacs of the 20th century. During the four years of his rule over Cambodia from 1975 to 79, almost two million people were murdered to save bullets, many simply being beaten to death with axes and hammers. It has been called one of the most extreme attempts to reorganise human society according to Marxist ideology. Most of it was done at the point of a gun. It ended in genocide. Pol Pot was born in 1925. He came from a relatively wealthy landowning family and was educated in the Cambodian capital, Phnom Penh. Although a bad student, he was eventually sent to Paris to study electronics, although at this he also failed, and was duly removed from his scholarship in 1953 and sent home. He had spent much of his time in France immersed in radical left-wing politics, and upon returning to Cambodia, steadily grew in importance amongst the Cambodian communist underground. It was this revolutionary activity that was to force Pol Pot to leave Phnom Penh in 1963 for the forests of northern Cambodia, as the increasingly unstable government of Prince Norodom Shinnok began to clamp down on anti-government organisations. Pol was eventually to claim the leadership of the Communist Party of Cambodia, known as the Khmer Rouge. Cambodia at this time was beginning to enter a period of extreme turmoil. Ineffective and poor central government, plus the effects of the war in Vietnam, had a doubly destabilising effect and provided fertile ground for revolutionary forces of both left and right. Between 1965 and 1968, the US dropped around 200 tonnes of ordnance on and around the border with Vietnam and conducted land invasions coordinated by the CIA and US Special Forces. These initiatives massively escalated following the election of Richard Nixon in 1968, after which time US bombing of Cambodia increased exponentially. By 1973, some 2.7 million tonnes had been dropped on Cambodia, most of which in and around the capital far away from the Vietnamese border. This is more than the Allies dropped during the whole of World War II. It is very likely that Cambodia is the most heavily bombed country in history. Initially, these bombing raids were targeted at North Vietnamese communist forces that were using Cambodia as a safe haven from the fighting in Vietnam. Later, the Nixon administration used the bombing to disrupt Khmer Rouge insurgent forces and prop up the right-wing government of Lon Nol that had taken power during a political coup in 1970. In the end, as was predicted at the time, and as which seems obvious in retrospect, the bombing did more to increase the popularity of the Khmer Rouge in resisting US forces and its puppet regime in Phnom Penh than it did to destroy it. Not least because 10% of the bombing raids were indiscriminate. The pilots just dropped the bombs wherever they pleased. This period of civil war in Cambodia, during which hundreds of thousands of people died, including thousands of children during the Khmer Rouge advance on the capital, ended in 1975 with communist victory and with Pol Pot's supreme dictator of all Cambodia. All enemies of the regime, all peoples and organisations threatening the survival of the coming communist utopia, were targeted. Foreigners were expelled, newspapers outlawed. Anyone, anything tainted by the old regime or western influence was exterminated. Religious leaders, politicians and civil servants, businessmen, intellectuals. Children were kidnapped from families and forced to fight in the army. Money, private property, jewellery, gambling and books were forbidden. The regime told you how to dress, whom to marry, even how to speak. 
In the cities, hospitals were stripped bare of all modern, that is, western, medical equipment, and doctors and nurses trained in modern medical practice removed to be re-educated and toil in the fields. It was children who replaced them, literally children, mostly around 10 to 15 years old, mostly illiterate, and, of course, with no actual medical training, to staff Cambodia's empty and crumbling hospitals. Random injections with dirty needles were given for any number of ailments. Injections of sweet and salty water, previously stored in old drinks bottles. Injections of coconut milk. The child medics had practiced their technique on cushions prior to seeing their patients, or else on tree bark. Most of the time, this would result in painful localised infection. If, by some miracle, they actually managed to inject into a vein, the results would be far worse. If you inject coconut milk into a vein of a living person, they almost certainly would die. Of course, no one was successfully treated by this new system. It was only the elite revolutionaries of Pol Pot's new regime that had access to real health care. Naturally, they had kept behind enough equipment and trained medical staff to service themselves and their families. Officials ordered a select group to serve inside Cambodia's prison camps. Here, they conducted medical experiments on the inmates, ostensibly to improve their understanding of anatomy and medicine, but often simply as a means of torture. Inmates were beaten to death and then submerged in water to test how long the body would remain submerged. A 17-year-old girl had her throat cut before being drowned to compare the effect. One inmate had his stomach and intestines cut open to record how well they healed, another his chest to see the heart beating. Of course, these operations were all performed on live patients experimented on with no anaesthesia by children, some as young as ten years old. People were moved into the countryside to live and work on newly created agricultural communities. The entire population of the capital Phnom Penh, around two and a half million people, were marched at gunpoint to the countryside. Anyone displaying the merest dissent, the wrong facial expression, the wrong word, a religious prayer or a letter inquiring as to the whereabouts of your husband, your son, even walking on the wrong side of a plough. All were arrested, tortured and executed. In this way, Pol Pot's government, chillingly known simply as the Organisation, oversaw a genuine orgy of violence and murder unmatched in the latter half of the 20th century. Today, Cambodia is littered with tens of thousands of mass execution sites across the entire country, known to us as the Killing Fields. Food shortages, starvation, disease and hard labour killed thousands, and just as many by the regime itself. Men, women and children were arrested and tortured, sometimes to elicit some form of a confession otherwise simply as a means of inflicting suffering before execution. Women were routinely raped, children and babies smashed against trees until dead. Prisoners would be shackled and simply left to starve. At night, soldiers would crawl under guard huts and bayonet the sleeping inmates through the bamboo floors. Most often, Prisoners would be forced to dig their own graves before their starved and broken bodies were beaten to death with iron bars, hammers and axes to save on bullets. If one family member was killed, their relatives would soon follow. It is estimated that around 1.6 to 1.8 million people died during the four years of Pol Pot's rule from 1975 to 1979. In 79, Vietnamese troops invaded and forced the Khmer Rouge leadership to flee the capital for Western Cambodia and Thailand. From here, 
Pol Pot launched an ongoing guerrilla war against the new Vietnamese-sponsored central government, and hence, was supported by both China and the USA. He died in his bed from heart failure in 1998.